So what does your office do? My office regulates uh, in vitro diagnostic tests, that is tests, blood, mostly, most people know are actually as, as blood tests, like cholesterol or uh, genetic tests, uh, that type of test. Oh, really, genetic tests that, that, uh, that points to the future. Yes, it, it hopefully does. Uh, it's, it's one of the areas we're very excited about. Genetic testing started uh, in big time, really, in the mid-90s and is becoming the, the primal mode of testing in many ways. Uh, we, are, uh, it, we think this is a, a, an interesting area because it allows, uh, it really is the entrance to what we call personalized medicine. It allows us to actually target drugs with a diagnostic to a population that, that will fit you know, well with the drug and, and the person so that we'll give the dry, right drug to the right person at the right time. What are some of the intellectual and scientific challenges uh, that you're going to face as you try to regulate these, these tests and make them work best for the public? This is somewhat of a new paradigm. Uh, uh, previously, drugs were developed so that, uh, and tested in a whole population. Now drugs are being developed for specific portions of specific people or uh, to be given to people, uh, you know, to be able to prevent, uh, you know, so that we don't actually give the uh, a drug to somebody who's going to have an adverse event. So this is the, the challenge is how do we develop them? The challenge is how we regulate them because drugs and devices are regulated very differently. Um, and so th it, it, it will, uh, it, it creates new both regulatory challenges and scientific challenges. Of course, people hear about personalized medicine and they think that, uh, that it's uh, a silver bullet. Uh, but it's not quite there yet, right? Well, it's, it's far from being there. There's only been uh, a couple cases that, that, uh, in which the, the diagnostic and the, the drug have been developed together and are, are, and are given that way. Uh, it really is more, everybody believes that that's the way the future is going to happen, but it takes a long time to develop drugs and, uh, and develop the, the, the diagnostic to go along with them. And talk a little bit about the Center for, for CDRH. Uh, what is its responsibility at the FDA? So the Center for Devices and Radiological Health regulates uh, medical devices. Uh, medical devices are things from uh, very simple things like thermometers to very complicated things like uh, implantable knees, uh, um, uh, even, even artificial hearts. Uh, and we regulate the whole gamut of medical devices. And, uh, even things have to do with uh, cell phones and... We also regulate, actually, uh, some things that are not considered medical devices, but that, that give off radiation, and those would be cell phones, uh, microwave ovens. We, we actually do regulate those too, yes. So it seems like you're part physicist, part molecular biologist, part uh, well. We have a center that is full of, of, of very of physicists, engineers, biologists. Uh, and the, the gamut of products we regulate is really, really broad. Yeah. It, but it seems though it's, it's very cutting edge, and you deal at the cutting edge of both science and engineering. We do. We deal with the cutting edge of science, engineering, uh, software. We we uh, we see a lot of of, of innovative uh, devices. So I guess that you do a lot of what the commissioner calls regulatory science and that you have to have enough people with the, with the kind of expertise to be able to have a reasonable conversation with the entrepreneur in the, in the garage who's just invented the, the new thing that's going to, uh, is, is going to keep me from having to have my knee replaced or something. That, that is correct. And, and uh, we deal with a, with a very broad industry that actually goes from, from as you say, the entrepreneur and, or the small businessman to to, to large manufacturers, uh, and we, we you know, in a sense, our, our regulations and the way we regulate has to be able to, to fit the whole gamut of, of uh, devices that we see and of manufacturers and, uh, that, that we deal with. So as you look to the future, what are some of the intellectual and, and other challenges that do you think that uh, you'll, be, you'll be facing that you're preparing for? Uh, well, I th we think personalized medicine is going to be an important one uh, uh, because, uh, as, I, as I said, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the um, new drugs that have been developed uh, actually rely on having a good diagnostic, both either an in vitro diagnostic or things like 
uh, uh, such as uh, x-rays uh, or uh, uh, MRIs and such. We see a lot of automated new devices uh, that uh, I, I think are helping doctors being able to do uh, um, therapy, well, surgeries that they weren't able to do before. So we, we, have a, we have a lot of new devices in the horizon. What are some of the changes that you've seen uh, in the center since you've been there? You've been there for a few years. I've been there for uh, almost 10 years. Um, and, and I mean, the changes are broad. Right now, I think we're going through a period in which we are looking at our, our regulations and seeing whether the, uh, our regulatory paradigm fits the type of devices that we're seeing. Uh, medicine has changed a lot since our law was passed, which was in 1976. And the commissioner has said that, that the, uh, she wants to take a, a good look at to, see, to see whether we need to make some changes or not, whether the, the, the 510K law, which is, is the, the kind of the basis of our law, fits the, the, the new devices and new paradigm that we see out there. There was no MRI in 1976. There was no MRI in Let alone cell phones. That's right. That's right. It, there, there's been a lot of changes. Thank you very much. You're welcome.